Welcome back to the Fox's Den. I'm Roxanne and this is the kitchen segment. And today we are going to have a little history lesson and a little culinary lesson. That's the teacher in me. And we are going to be making Welsh cakes. They are delicious. Let's talk about what a Welsh cake is. So a Welsh cake is sort of like a cross between, if we're talking about here in America, a cross between like a pancake and a cookie almost. Of course, they are from Wales and they're an old recipe. I had to go through and, and really read and research to get the amounts correct, but I think, I think I nailed it. Back in history, these little cakes were made because the miners or the men working out in the fields needed something that would stay and they could take. Often, um, when I was doing my research, I would hear the women telling about when they were young girls, how they would be a baking day and they would bake these, put them in a tin, and they would last for the week. Uh, some are even made with lard. We're going to go straight with butter. But some of them are also heavily like seasoned with spices like cinnamon and nutmeg, which I love, which here in America gives us like a Christmassy feel. And the reason for that is because if it were for the miners, their sense of taste and smell was lessened over time because of where they were working and the situations they were working in. So they would put more spices in them so they could taste it and they could enjoy it. But of course, you know, all recipes are flexible. You can make it however you want. Before we get started, one of the ingredients that is a dried fruit and because this is a European recipe we have some crossing over and misconceptions of some words when we tried to do it here in America so I'm just going to explain a few things to you one of the common things is a dried fruit so here I have the Zanti current and I'll explain that to you in a minute you could put that in this is they it, this is a golden um, raisin, it's also known as a sultana. I'll tell you, explain that in a minute. And these are just raisins in general. You can use any one of these. You can use other things if you'd like to. I bet dried cherries would be amazing. In now, before I even get started, did I mention? I forgot if I mentioned, because I stopped and started so many times. Um, if I mentioned that March 1st is St. David's Day, and he is a Welsh saint. And on March 1st, people nowadays, they make these as a little treat. But um, they were an everyday treat many years ago. Okay, so back to the story here. Now, all of three of these, Zanti currants, um, sultanas, and uh, raisins, they are all made from grapes. So a Zanti currant is a small a smaller grape and it is a dark grape like a purple deep purple with a, a dark flesh so when it dries it is much smaller and it is sweet this here is both of these actually come from a white fleshed grape the outside is green this green is a little darker than this one so when this one dries it becomes black this one dries, it's more golden. They're just as sweet. This one absorbs liquid and flavor much faster than this one, and both of these absorb much faster than a current. But this is a Zanny current. What happened was, um, as history says, a real current is a berry that grows on a bush, and it's black and or like a deep red color, and it's much more tart and very rare to get. Zanti current really is referring to the small little grape that makes these. And what happened was they were mistaken for currants many years ago, so the legend says. And so then they had to really distinguish between it and call this a Zanti um, current, which is really still a grape. Now, in the English um, versions of the recipes and the Welsh ver versions and the United Kingdom versions and, and the British versions, whatever you want to say, um, they kept referring to it as they said, oh, some like a current, some like sultanas, but they call raisins sultanas. A sultana is really grown, it's a specific grape that is grown in Turkey. And it is a golden, makes like a golden raisin. There is a difference between a golden raisin and a sultana. But here's the end of it all from my little lesson here. Golden raisins, sultanas, raisins, zanti currants. These are sweet and very similar. These two absorb liquid faster than this one. 
This one is smaller. Use whatever you like. Use dried, dried cherries, don't even use these. All right, now that we got that little history lesson done there, um, or culinary lesson done, here we go. You could put this in a bowl. I want for, for you to be able to see it, I'm just gonna put it right here. It is very simple. I have one cup of flour. You might see, I mean, it comes out to be eight ounces when they um, were doing the math of it all. So this is a cup of flour for all of us here in the United States. Okay. And to the flour, you want to add, now this is half a cup of sugar, but you don't want the whole thing. You wanna use like just shy of the half a cup and put it directly in here because what's going to happen is it makes a grainy feel. And when you add the butter, it makes it easier to incorporate it. But you need some leftover because you're going to dredge them almost like we Italians do with funnel cake or fried dough. Dredge it when it comes out nice and warm through the sugar. So you don't need the whole thing. So I'm just pouring it right on top and I'm leaving this here. Okay. Next, you need a half a cup of butter. It should be cold and it should be chilled and you can slice it up. Now, I would normally already have this done, but I wanted to show you that I'm really just slicing it into little pieces like this because then it's going to be easy to incorporate. Okay, half a cup, here we go. Then I'm going to, it feels like a sand, and I'm gonna put it together in my hand till it starts to form a dough. I'm gonna incorporate this part and then this part. Um, something you're gonna find if you do a little research is you're going to see that some recipes call for lard or a combination of butter and lard. And originally they used lard, but you have to understand things are different here. I wouldn't use the lard. And when I mean here, I don't mean here in America, I just mean here in general. Years ago, you would have a pig out on the farm. You'd render the fat from the pig. It'd be lily white. It'd be actually beautiful. And I don't know how that works now. So butter it is for us. <laughs> All right, so because there's a grainy texture with the sugar, it helps to incorporate the butter. Now, of course, it goes without saying that you should have impeccably clean hands. You do not need any more fat at all to like make these. So when we go to fry these up, you actually put them on a, a griddle and I will show you all of that. You will not need, because of all the fat that's already in it, you will not need any kind of oil or butter or anything like that. Got to get all the little bits. It gives your fingers a workout. That's okay, I need that. I'm taking piano lessons. So I formed the dough, now I'm making a little well, and you want to crack one egg into this well. And then you want to add, they say approximately, three uh, teaspoons of milk, but you add as much as is needed. If it's too dry, you add a little bit more. Okay, I didn't even need to add any milk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a handful, and that's basically it, a handful of raisins. You can add whatever you like. And I'm also going to sprinkle with some cinnamon, and then I'm gonna fold it and work it in, into the dough. And then what happens is you let the dough chill at least a half hour, just so that the butter in it starts to harden again, solidify, because right now it's warm for my hands. And then you're going to roll it out, and we're gonna cut them out, and we're gonna fry them, and God, it's going to I'm going to so put some saran wrap on it, put it in, in the refrigerator for about a half hour, and I will be back. I floured my surface. The dough has chilled. I'm going to roll it out. My little tiny rolling pin here. <laughs> and then we're going to cut it out. Now you can use a fluted circular uh, cookie cutter, um, whatever you have. Sometimes in our Italian families, we have those handheld ravioli cutters. I am going to use a glass. All right, so I have the dough rolled out 
And now I'm going to get them ready to cut out. They are, they tend to be, these might be too thin. They usually are a little thicker than this. Here we go. That's good. All right. And then of course, whatever, after you cut out, you put all the little bits back together and you cut out more. You know that I'm gluten free. If you were going to use a gluten free flour, you need to use, instead of a cup, you need to use a cup and a half of flour. And I'll mention that. I mean, I'll write that in the description when I do the recipe. Everything else stays the same. All right, we're gonna be frying them up soon. There's my griddle. You can flip it over to the other side and it's a grill, this side it's a griddle and or a plank and it is cast iron. It has it has been heating up for about 10 minutes. You want it to get it nice and warm. There is there is no like fat on it. There isn't a spray or anything. If you see a tiny bit of a shine, that's because when you wipe down cast iron, you oil it a little bit and that might be what you're seeing, but that's just seasoned. That's it. You don't need to add anything else. And you're gonna put them directly on there and I will show you how that works. Over here I have the plate with the sugar on it that I am going to dredge them through. And then over there's my little fox plate where I'll put the finished Welsh cake on. If you get an up close look, you can see where they're starting to glisten because the heat is starting to melt all of that yummy butter that is inside. And soon we will flip them. Soon off, and if we're very quiet, you can hear like a little sizzle. They're so yummy. So I've gone and flipped them, the two in the center there, just because that's the part of my griddle that warms up fastest. And then I will start to flip the others, and you can see how they have like a pancake look to them. And they don't break apart, they stay firm. We're getting there. Oh my God, they're beautiful. To come off and I'm going to put them right into the sugar and dredge them. I will show you that in a minute. Sprinkle it with sugar. Okay, they are finished. They're still warm. Some have more sugar than others. It depends upon, oops. Some have more sugar than others. It depends upon what you like. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to have one. And I can because I made mine gluten free. So here's one right here. So delicate, it's still warm. Oh wow. It's light and flaky. Then you have the warmness of the cinnamon. Just enough sugar, they're not too sweet. Every now and then you get the sweetness of the raisin. Good stuff. So, happy St. David's Day. Try some Welsh cakes. They're easy to make and they're pretty good. Thank you for tuning into the Fox's Den. I'm Roxanne and you enjoy your day.